Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm um, going to give you guys uh, some riding tips today. Um, I rode really well last weekend, so I wanted to record some of this and uh, show you uh, what I was doing. Basically, I was not being a laser rider for once, and so uh, I, was, I was doing pretty good, and I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the stuff that I use to uh, keep my form in good shape. So, first off, what we're looking at here is uh, me coming down a straightaway into a high-speed corner. And you can see right here, my hips are uh, really, really far back. My back is straight. Um, what you can't see in these videos is that I'm, uh, well, I guess you can. I'm wearing a backpack, so my back won't look as flat as it really is because I've got a hump on my back. But you can see in this section here that uh, my hips are really, really unlocked to the rear. And I'm, uh, you know, absorbing those bumps really well. These are these are very, very uh, large square edge bumps. They're formed by uh, rocks being inside of them so that the tops don't get chipped away. So they develop these holes because the rear wheel hits these, the dirt and, and peels it out. So you can see here, here I got my uh, body weight back, um, elbows are up, and right now my, my weight is being shoved forward into the front of the seat. Um, I'm already finished with all my braking and everything. I've got my foot um, on extension. I'm using my leg as a little bit of a counterbalance here. It's not stuck real far out yet, but um, this is a corner where I probably could keep it on the foot peg, but it's you can see it's real, real dusty and marbly. If you look real careful in the rut, kind of where my front tire is pointed, you can see it's just littered with rocks. In full speed and zoomed out, you can't see any of this, so I'm I'm going a lot faster than it looks in my videos. These are, are all rock strewn. It's like riding on a bunch of golf balls. So coming around here, you can see uh, right here, the uh, front of my foot is very much on the front of the foot peg. So I'm on, I'm on my toes or the ball of my foot here coming out of the corner. That is putting pressure into the foot peg and when you put pressure into the foot peg if we were to follow my foot all the way back like from my heel right now you can see it's pointing right at where the contact patch is with the ground so that weight is being shoved into the rear wheel you can see immediately I go back to the straight back hips unlocked I'm actually not wearing a backpack in this clip am I yeah I am sorry my bad I thought my rear jersey was just flying into the wind but you can see I'm still on my toes and my back is extremely straight. I'm very aggressive with my uh, head over the number plate and I probably do a little bit of clutch work or maybe I just uh, kind of just pull back a little bit to get the wheel to come on off the ground because these holes right here are actually uh, quite big. You can see right here how high my front end actually is. Um, I don't know if it really feels like that when I'm doing it but you can see that's a, that's a pretty big wheelie and I'm getting my front wheel over all three of those big bumps because they're big enough that they will blow through the travel of the front end of the bike and um, and you know cause the front end of the bike to handle differently and I, I leave the bike a little bit softer than I would in other motocross conditions because the it has to be able to absorb all the little stuff and the little rocks and stuff too so you can see once again I'm coming up my body weight is coming forward um, sorry for the poor quality, but these are zoomed in drone shots, so I'm zoomed really, really in. Um, you can see the angle of my leg in these. That's a good shot in the sunlight right there. How loaded up. My suspension, my leg, is completely bottomed out right now, so all the weight is being transferred into the foot peg because there's just no flexibility left in my leg. So I'm driving all that force into the foot peg from the ball of my foot, which is going to the rear tire. And you can see how much the compression on the suspension is settled right now. I'm about halfway through my travel. And this is actually a fairly flowy corner. So you can see how much weight and pressure, you can see my body is like actually collapsing a little bit, uh, putting all the weight into the bike. I immediately uh, basically get my butt up a little bit and reposition. And now right in this photo, my other leg is all squatted out and pushing pressure into the ground and I'm putting my boot out to counterbalance on this side. So all that weight is being shoved into that outside peg. And this is a flat sweeper, pretty high speed. I'm in, uh, uh, 
I'm actually in second gear, I think, right here. But um, I shift as soon as I can, as soon as my foot gets back on the foot peg, usually. And you can see it, it coming back up to the foot peg as soon as I'm exiting the corner there. Uh, fast forward through here a little bit. You can see my back is flat. Um, I got a very aggressive attack position coming into this corner. And you can see my toe is loaded into the foot peg again for this really, really flat, slick sweeper. And you can look right there. If you look in this photo, you can just see all the rocks in there. Those things are like golf ball and baseball sized rocks. Um, you don't see it in the GoPro footage, footage and you don't see it in the drone footage, but I'm very carefully selecting my lines and I've got all that weight into that outside peg so that I can hold the ground in these flat slick corners with grass in them. You can see I got off the seat a little bit there and that allows me to reconfigure my body position again in the bike, weighting the outside peg really, really hard. Back is flat and got a little bit of a, a little bit of a pivot from my foot there probably slid a little bit and it stuffed my foot into the ground so I recalculate here and get my foot out again and that right there I actually don't see a lot of riding coaches talk about this but you you can actually plant your foot to get the bike to change direction right so if we watch this my bike is just kind of drifting to the outside line and you can actually see it sliding there and you can see the front tire sliding too by the the roost that's coming off of the tire or the dust and the front end kind of starts to tuck just a tiny bit so basically I turned a little bit more aggressively and I stick my foot into the ground right there to cause the bike to pivot away from that outside line because I'm probably trying to avoid that darker dirt that's right by my front fender that's either wet and slippery or the hole is deeper it's probably a combination of both so I wanted to steer my front tire inside of that instead of into it so you can see right there, I cut to the inside of that line and went right around it, right? The other thing that I don't hear other guys talking about um, in coaching stuff is that, you know, th there's a lot of G-force and stuff going on here and you're tired at the end of your moto. I often, I think, subconsciously use the ground to actually kick my leg back up for me so I don't have to lift it. That sounds extremely lazy, but I am. I'm not gonna lie about it. So I actually will use my foot to hit the ground to kick it back up so that it lifts it for me so that I can get it onto the foot peg. And it usually throws it back also. So it's really easy to land on the ball of your foot where it's supposed to be on the foot peg on the front. So there's a downshift there going into this downhill off camber, really slick with large holes corner. This is a really, really dry, hard, slick, duffy stuff. You can see how loaded up I am into the into my leg right here. It's completely bottomed out and my foot, the toe of my foot is just jammed into the foot peg. And you can see the angle in there, my back is straight. Um, probably got a little bit too low on my elbow there, but sometimes the elbow will drop a little bit when I'm making uh, quick corrections in the handlebar for the bike sliding. And I also have some problems with my left hand which keeps my uh, my elbow dropping sometimes too just because my wrist doesn't bend correctly but you can see right here um, my hips start to come back off the seat unlocked and then I go straight into a wheelie through these massive G out holes right here boom and I wheelied over all three and continued on oops the zoom footage there got a little bit off so we kind of missed what I'm showing you there but this this little canyon thing that I'm going into here is, is a massive G out section and you can see my suspension squatting my body squatted everything what I'm doing right here is I'm loading all of my body weight into the suspension to get it near bottomed out because it's a it's a G out right so we're nearly bottomed out there you can see my rear fender real close to the to the tire and if you look right here where this dark line is in front of my tire this thing is it's a couple of big holes right at the top of this hill and if you just come up the hill all nonchalant and you hit that thing right there your front end drops into that and it will buck your rear end up in the air and it screws you up for this corner so I come down into this I load my body and I seat bounce over that little bump and it gets the front wheel over those other two bumps therefore I don't get bucked and my front tire stays on the ground real nice 
and I can brake properly coming into this corner. Once again, you can see my foot is on the ball and all of my weight is loaded into the front of my leg there, pushing straight down into the foot peg. Take the inside line on this crazy slick corner. Everybody crashes in this thing all day long. It's really loose and it's just like riding in a big sandbox of, of BBs. And I come out of there and you can see I've already got my foot on the foot peg coming out of there. I had such good traction and, and weight. Like I said, I was riding much better than uh, I usually do just because I don't get to ride very often. So while we came into here, as you can see, my hips are really unlocked. My back is super straight. This is, this is excellent right here. And I got to get my, uh, my front end a, li a little bit light there to get over a couple kickers. You saw it bucked me still a little bit. And then this is a big G out. And when I'm going through this G out, I actually stay a little bit stiff leg right through here and my legs are a little bit stiff there because I'm compressing into the suspension right there and I'm actually going to get really light on my feet once I go over this bump and I get really light on my feet so that the suspension will actually rebound it's like a it's like a mini seat bounce except for I don't really come off the ground so I'm a little bit stiffer legged right there so the suspension will eat it and then I immediately get light on my feet and you'll almost see me kind of like pull the bike up into my body it looks like I'm bunny hopping. It looks a little bit goofy. But what it does is if you come out of this G out and you hit right there, your front end immediately drops. And it hits this bump. And then it goes into a series of other bumps that actually weren't really that bad today. But usually this is all chopped up and nasty in here. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard layer with soft underneath so that it gets real square edged. And you can see I just got my hips unlocked all the way back and I'm just absorbing that into my body as much as I can and quite high speed. Back to one of those original corners again, you can see on exit, very, very flat back. Um, back over, you can see me wheelie over those couple bumps. This is like a, like a Travis Pastrana manual, right? So I'm just wheeling over all that stuff so that only one tire is hitting it. And you can see my body position stayed extremely straight and in control. Uh, coming in there you can see the the bike completely squatted I might have both feet on the foot pegs here um, sometimes I do it just depends on uh, what the traction's like on entry and you can see I'm completely squatted in got all the pressure into the wheels on that outside line and I was absolutely shredding this corner today and you can see coming through there um, just nice smooth line out of there standing up into the downhill uh, flat back coming in foot loaded into the outer peg off camber downhill and bumpy and wet you can't see the wet it looks like it's dusty but there is wet the water pools up down in this bottom corner and there's a real square edge right at the edge of the grass there too and so you can see came in there got off the off the back just a little bit and uh, got it to wheelie over those huge bumps at the bottom those are almost whoop de doo size sometimes. And here you can see I'm really, really weighted on the outer peg. And then I lean forward coming right over the top of the hill here. It's kind of like a scrub, kind of scrub up the hill. And then I immediately dump the clutch right here. Boom, clutch gets dumped. And that helps me push more G-force into the suspension so that I can compress that at the bottom right there and hop over those couple bumps right there that are really bad kickers. Like People are very, very slow through this section because they don't seat bounce over those couple bumps right there. And they get uh, lined up terribly for that corner. So you can see it, it doesn't look like I'm doing anything, but there's a tremendous amount of technique in compressing the bike and lifting over those bumps so that I can stay lined up for the next corner right through here. Okay, so here's, a, here's another good one of me going down the straightaway. You can see how compressed the suspension is there. My back is super flat. I'm very aggressive fight position over the front end. The bike is wheeling over the gnarly, gnarly bumps. This is a third gear absolutely tapped out right here. Um, and my bike's actually geared up, so it's uh, because it's a, a XC transmission. I have a 14-tooth sprocket on it, so it's 
it's 1451 I think or 1450 maybe I don't remember but you can see how aggressive that is and back in there letting my body absorb all those bumps immediately into the front of the bike and you can see good extension on my hip there when we come around here my my foot could be a little bit tighter to the bike but um, it's it's buried my ankle bone is actually buried into the frame right there so my my toe position wasn't real great when I got it on there but it's not it's not bad but you can see how weighted it is and very very smooth around this flat corner with no ruts and on the exit we'll see here so I might have slipped and caught my and caught my foot or used my foot to keep me from uh, from from sliding the front end out but sometimes if like you're coming around a corner like this and you're you're coming from the middle line like I am instead of the outside because the outside was really soft in this case and I didn't want to be in that really really soft berm which you can see how it explodes right there but I wanted to hit the berm so that I would actually stay in the center of the track a little bit so if I were to touch my foot to the ground right here boom it will cause the bike to pivot the front end to pivot I should say and the back end will hit right there boom and then what would normally happen is I would go out to the the left side outside line and then I could avoid any of the big bumps on the inside on the corner exit or I guess it technically be the outside so the the right side of the track I could potentially avoid any big bumps like accelerating bumps coming out of there by pivoting just a little bit sooner by tucking my foot and going on the outside where the darker lines are in the dirt there but uh, in this case that's not what I did it looks like maybe the the front end was sliding a little bit um, due to carrying too much speed or something but uh, you can see I got lined up real nice hips back taking up these bumps and uh, going into the corner real nice so anyway I hope you guys uh, learned a little something from that and maybe it, it helped to uh, break down some of the stuff that you see me ride um, I, like I said I was riding really really well today so I knew that my form was gonna be good and I was patient and stuff with the throttle and and <laughs> wasn't uh, just banging on the clutch a lot of the time like I am to get out my frustrations but uh, rode with really really good form and a lot of people actually came up and and complimented on how fast I was riding uh, I had a good day and I wanted to share some of those tips with you so thanks for watching stay tuned uh, consider subscribing if you're not and uh, I'll release a little bit more um, riding footage and technique stuff in the future thanks Bye.